this has to be the same guy. And he had prepared for him a great chamber where aforetime they laid the meat offerings, the frankincense, and the vessels, and the tithes of the corn, the new wine, and the oil, which was commanded to be given to the Levites and the singers and the porters and the offerings of the priests. But in all this time was not I at Jerusalem. For in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I into the king. And after certain days obtained I leave of the king. And I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Eliashib did for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. This guy... This guy, this governor, Tobiah, got Eliashib. He manipulated him into making him a special little hut in the tabernacle. This guy, there's four people. This is how I'm going to remember this chapter. These Ezra and Nehemiah, but these horrible lawyer counselors. Shimshai, Rehum, Sambalot, and this Tobiah. Let's see what else. I hope he gets it. Mm -mm. And it grieved me sore. Therefore, I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. Good. I hope that's not all he does. That's, that's all we've heard about. These evil... Look at this guy, Tobiah, was laughing, mocking when they were building the wall, when they were putting Jerusalem back up. And now he has moved in to the tabernacle. This guy, he is satanic. He's demonic. Yep. Then I commanded, and they cleansed the chambers, and thither I brought again the vessels of the house of God with the meat offering and the frankincense. And I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them, for the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled every one to his field. Uh-oh. And I perceived Portions of the Levites had not been given them for the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled everyone to his field. Then contended I with the rulers and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil unto the treasuries. And I made treasurers over the treasuries. Shelemiah the priest and Zadok the scribe, and of the Levites, Bediah, and next to them was Anan, the son of Zachar, the son of Mataniah. For they were counted faithful, and their office was to distribute unto their brethren. They've had... I don't think this is just the second time this has happened. This is like the third time. That the priests are not giving the stuff out. I don't know. Remember me, oh my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. In those days saw I and Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and let leading asses, as also wine grapes and figs, and all manner of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. So they're doing business on the Sabbath. There dwelt men of Tyre, all 
also therein which brought fish in all manner of ware and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, What evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? Did not your fathers thus and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? shut down the gates. So the merchants and sellers of all kind of ware lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. Then I testified against them and said unto them, Why lodge ye about the wall? If ye do so, again I will lay hands on you. From that time forth, It's your neighbor, huh? <clears throat> Love your neighbor. Nope. So, nope, I'm going to lay hands on you. Get away from the wall. It's the Sabbath. Nope. So they're talking about Ashton right now. Mm. That is part of Israel somehow now. It needs to be a separate place, I guess. What does that mean, right? They're not just married to people in Ashton. They're they have usurped Ashton. They are Ashton now, right? What does that mean? And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language. <clears throat> Ashdod. There's nothing called Ashdodian, right? So, is it, what is it? Elam? Edom? What could it be? It's right there, Ashdod. Some kind of, huh, like a Nokian language? What is Ashdod? I'm going to have to find that out. Probably um, just Venetian, you know? Like Tyre and Sidon. They're not speaking Hebrew. Hebrew, they're just speaking Phoenician. Like Aramaic. Sumerian, maybe a little bit. Akkadian. Some Assyrian. But I think that's what they mean. But That was a place of idolatry. Ashdod, right? We can let that hold them up. We're at the end of this last chapter. But according to the language of each people. Oh.
tell a bunch of different people, probably, whoever they were. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him, who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Shall we then hearken? That's, that's a good study too, right? Outlandish. Mm, I've heard that word a lot in my life. You'd be like, oh, that's just outlandish. That's just unacceptable in, in that way, right? But this is what it means. Outlandish. People not from your land. Outlandish. People you're not supposed to be... You're, people you're supposed to be separated from. People... You're not supposed to be around people that are going to lead you to idolatry no matter what. Outlandish. Does it mean like, you know, oh, just stunning, so... So utterly fabulous, outlandish. Or like it's a rebuke, just a regular one. No, this is outlandish. Women cause to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil to transgress against our God to marrying strange wives? And one of the sons of Joyada, the son of Eliashib, the high priest, was son-in-law to Sanballat. Oh, no. There are like two sentences left in this chapter. And here we go. I knew it. I watched too much TV. Uh, I have in my life. I don't even have a TV for many years now. But the damage is done. I knew this, these, these two, for whatever, these four, they stuck up like sore thumbs. So here we are, we're at the end. What is it going to happen? Tobiah, that guy had the nerve to set up his, he had like a special little place in the, in the temple. Let's going to find, let's find out now what this idiot Oh, but you should love everybody. You should love your neighbor. Oh, right. Here we go. It's going to be bad. There's like two sentences left. Sanbalat, the Horonite. We don't even need to know. We don't need his description. We know exactly who he is. Therefore, I chased him from me. So, is that it? He chases Tobias out. He cast forth the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. And he cleansed it. But this guy gets chased. That's it. They are devils. They are so devilish. They are. I chased him from me. They are like attached to these two chapters. These stumbling blocks. They're devils. And look at the end. See? They're just attached. They won't get off of them. He's like, I had to 
threw out one of their stuff, chased this guy. Okay, remember that, oh my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. Okay, do you see what's happening? So, after all these years, these the first two got whatever Artaxerxes it was to order them to stop building anything, stop building the wall for no reason. They're just lawyers. They have no business. They are demonic, right? There's no reason. So then all these, some years pass and Nehemiah, they were fighting with him and that one weirdo, was it Samalot goes, you need to come over here. He call, he writes five letters to him. You need, we need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. No, we don't. We don't need to talk at all, right? Not at all. And they're just demonic. There's no explanation. Jealousy, hatred. There's no explanation. And so they finally build everything, right? And these people did nothing but harass them, laugh at them, mock them. This Sambalot and Tobiah. And look at look at what happens. When he leaves town for what did it say in the thirtieth and two year of something? When he leaves when Nehemiah leaves town, these fools let that Tobiah set up a a hut or whatever. In the tabernacle. Like that, who, that is just, that's not allowed. And then this Sandblatt guy is like a scourge who will not leave him alone. He's like a, a monkey on his back. He will not get away from him. Can you believe that though? He leaves town and he comes back and he, there's a hut built in the tabernacle. This guy and didn't nobody know? Because why? You know why? Oh, he loves his brother so much. He just didn't open his mouth. He just went about his business to keep building. These people are like cockroaches. They're like demons. No. He needs to, to be, to instruct these people. By the way, um, you know your, our neighbors we love so much. Well, when Tobias comes to build a hut in the temple of Christ, of the temple of God, yeah, you're not going to let that happen. What is this love, my neighbor? What, what, are these people like just so loving to their neighbor? They just didn't have to correct him. They just allowed him to come on in the temple. The Levites allowed that. Everybody allowed that. Him to go build his own little spot in the temple. How was he not struck dead? I guess he didn't touch it. Touch things he shouldn't touch. But I don't know how he was stuck dead. Just going in there. I really don't. And this other guy, Sambalot, he is like an absolute demon. You hear about him all the way at the end. And you know what? This is so satanic and demonized, right? Well, it's always two of them in a pair, right? We've seen this now. The first two and then these two. And it'll never end. It's a constant pattern. And no... No, 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 no. There is no all loving thy neighbor. No, this is why. This is an exact, exact reason why. Okay. There was a problem. Did they love their neighbors too much? And so they just let him come in and defile this tabernacle. Is that it? Okay. Well, that's why you can't do that. Or was it because um, it doesn't matter. Thus cleansed I from all strangers and appointed the wards of the priests and the Levites, every one in his business, and for the wood offering at times appointed, and for the first fruits, remember me, O oh my God, for good. We heard that though earlier. Somebody was son in law to Sambalat. They did not, I don't, I'm. Sure, they did not marry into this after 
you know, he was just against them from the beginning. They were not, no, uh uh-uh. You can even see, he's going to, he says, I will lay hands on you. He goes, if you keep coming, he told the the, the people from Tyre, if they keep selling their fish and stuff, and they're, he told them, don't come by. And they kept coming by, and he goes, if you sit by the wall on Shabbat, the next time I find you here, I'm going to put my hands on you. So, no, it kind of sounds like they just, uh, all uh, Nehemiah's uh, people behind, when he went to visit the king in Persia, they just dropped the ball. It's, It's like, they're just like, oh yeah, it's cool, you know. They're just, you know, we all have wives, you know, of out outlandish wives and you know, all of that, so yeah, he can come in the, you know, temple and I don't know how that guy's instructed. No. Nope. To me, this is what these two chapters are about. These four devils. And no, it's not about, you got to be good to your neighbor. Nope. It shows um, why you, that's not possible. And what happens. And people, these devilish demons, they will never stop. You you can't be good. You, there's no, there's no. It's not just negotiating. There's just no talking to them. And he does a pretty good job of it. He, I think he just didn't want to talk to them so much that he, the, they, they just, those are like the only apertures in at any time. He, pray, he was all prayed up. And like, sure enough, that's how devilish people, um, demons, whatever you want to call it, however it makes you feel better. But yeah, no, uh-uh. There's no, you always have to love your demon neighbor. That's not happening. No. No. Uh Uh-uh. That's not Nehemiah's personality. That is not Ezra's personality. No, that's not how people stay alive. Nope.